Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and at the beginning of 2020, so 15 years ago, I made a video where I went over every single new Pokedex entry in Pokemon Sword and Shield that I thought was crazy. With crazy being a broad term covering things that I thought were disturbing or shocking or funny or interesting or some new information about an older gen Pokemon that we didn't have before. Today's video will be the exact same thing except for dex entries in the Sword and Shield expansion pass the Isle of Armor, and the Crown Tundra. Most of the dex entries are for older generation Pokemon, but they are still new dex entries. Starting with the Alola games, they stopped just rehashing the same couple dex entries for older generation Pokemon. They started making new ones, and they continued that trend in Sword and Shield. So, a lot of the dex entries are completely brand new, even though the Pokemon are many generations old. This list will be in no particular order. I tried to go generally in Pokedex order, but I might have gotten things mixed up. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tap that bell for notifications since less than half of my viewers are subscribed. And let's dive in to every crazy Pokedex entry in the Sword and Shield expansion pass. We shall begin with dex entries from the Isle of Armor Pokedex. Dunsparce's sword entry reads, this Pokemon's tiny wings have some scientists saying that Dunsparce used to fly through the sky in ancient times. I love that they acknowledge Dunsparce's wings in more of a way than just, oh, it can float a little. I think it's really cool to acknowledge that Probably in ancient times, Dunsparce looked something more like those fake Dunsparce evolutions that are all over the internet. And if that's the case, wow, what a hell of a downgrade. Next up are dex entries for Lickitung, and I think both its sword and shield entries are worthy of note. Lickitung's sword entry reads, if this Pokemon sticky saliva gets on you and you don't clean it off, an intense itch will set in. The itch won't go away either. Okay, I already thought Lickitung was a gross Pokemon, but now if it licks you and you don't clean it off, you will itch in that spot forever. That's disgusting and horrifying. And also how much time do you have? If you don't clean it off, don't clean it off like what? In a minute, in an hour? I don't like thinking about it. And then it's shield entry reads, bug Pokemon are Lickitung's main food source. This Pokemon paralyzes its prey with a lick from its long tongue, then swallows the prey whole. This is the first we learn of Lickitung actually eating bug Pokemon and eating them whole for that matter, which is very gross. But also I kind of picture it trying to eat a Scolipede. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to swallow that thing whole and that not going well. Venipede's sword entry reads, Venipede and Sizzlipede are similar species, but when the two meet, a huge fight ensues. I love it when Pokemon talks about taxonomy or evolutionary branches of the evolutionary tree. So the fact that they acknowledge that two Pokemon whose names end in the same thing are actually related is awesome. Fungus' sword entry reads, no one knows what the Pokeball-like pattern on Fungus means or why Fungus has it. This is hilarious. We know why it's there. It's because when making the Gen 5 games black and white and no old Pokemon were there, they decided, oh, we still want to have a fake item Pokemon. So they made mushrooms with Pokeballs on the top of their heads. But in the Pokemon universe, this acknowledges how deeply illogical it is because why would these mushrooms mimic metal man-made devices? It's just, it's ridiculous. Magnemite's sword entry reads, at times Magnemite runs out of electricity and ends up on the ground. If you give batteries to a grounded Magnemite, it'll start moving again. I think this is so cute. Like. If a little Magnemite is tired, just like, get out some batteries. It's like, here you go, little guy. It's gonna be okay. And then it'll be okay. Like, how funny is that? Herdier's sword entry reads, Herdier is a very smart and friendly Pokemon. So much so that there's a theory that Herdier was the first Pokemon to partner with people. I love how this is kind of a nod to dogs being domesticated in ancient times from wolves. So Herdier is a domestic dog Pokemon and is known for working with people. 
And so it makes sense that it might have been one of the first ones. Maybe Herdier wasn't just deciding to work with people. It was originally some wild wolf Pokemon and ancient Pokemon people domesticated it. I wanted to note that this isn't the first time we've learned about Herdier being one of the very first creatures to work with people. Its Ultra Moon entry reads, it has been living with people for so long that portrayals of it can be found on the walls of caves from long, long ago. I just really wanna see some official Pokemon cave paintings. That would be awesome. Next up are Scizor's Dex entries, and I'm gonna cover both of them. Its sword entry reads, bulky pincers account for one third of Scizor's body weight. A single swing of one of these pincers will crush a boulder completely. I'm amused by this because it informs us of the precise weight of Scizor's pincers. It weighs 260.1 pounds, which means its pincers together weigh 86.7 pounds, which that's like having a 45 pound weight plate on each hand, approximately. I'd be impressed if you could crush a boulder with it, but actually, considering the next entry, it being able to crush a boulder kind of makes sense. Its shield entry reads, though its body is slim, Scizor has tremendous attacking power. Even Scizor's muscles are made of metal. How is this possible? No idea. Is it extremely cool sounding? Yes. Palisand's sword entry reads, Palisand is known as the beach nightmare. It pulls its prey down into the sand by controlling the sand itself, and then it sucks out their souls. Lots of ghost Pokemon are disturbing, of course, and Palisand is no exception. Plenty of its previous dex entries talk about how it sucks out the vitality of its targets. However, to me, there's a difference between sucking out the vitality, basically just killing things, and then sucking out their souls. This seems to say that rather than just killing its targets, it turns them into soulless husks. Also, it's called the Beach Nightmare. Exploud's sword entry reads, in the past, people would use the loud voices of these Pokemon as a means of communication between distant cities. This is amazing. Okay, Exploud, tell him that we need the bread and milk delivered by next Thursday, or else our entire village is going to starve. Okay, you got that? Great, now tell him. Exploud, exploud, exploud! Great, thanks for doing that. I'm sure they understood that and will be totally fine. Skarmory's sword entry reads, the pointed feathers of these Pokemon are sharper than swords. Skarmory and Corviknight fight viciously over territory. I really like it when they acknowledge that they have two Pokemon that are of sort of similar designs. And so they just make them enemies, it's fantastic. I also wanted to mention Skarmory's shield entry, which says people fashion swords from Skarmory's shed feathers. So this Pokemon is a popular element in heraldic designs. I had to look it up, so there's probably a good chance that you didn't know either, but heraldic basically means coats of arms, you know, those fancy symbols that a lot of families or sports teams in Europe use. So I just think that's really interesting that Skarmory is often featured in those in the Pokemon world because they use its fallen feathers for swords. Could you imagine that? There's just a bird and when it sheds a feather, it's a sword? Mian Xiao's sword entry reads, when Mian Xiao comes across a truly challenging opponent, it will lighten itself by biting off the fur on its arms. I know it's just hair, it's not like, biting off its own arm or something crazy like that. But still, this this seems really intense and kind of metal to me. Volcarona's sword entry reads, Volcarona scatters burning scales. Some say it does this to start fires. Others say it's trying to rescue those that suffer in the cold. I like this entry because it kind of acknowledges some inconsistencies in Volcarona's other dex entries. A lot of them talk about how when a volcanic eruption darkened the atmosphere in ancient times, it served as the replacement sun. And then some other ones mention that it scatters its embers to help keep suffering small Pokemon warm in the cold. But then its Ultra Sun Dex entry says that ancient people feared it and called it the rage of the sun. So this new Dex entry basically says that that debate is still going on today. 
Some are saying it's a kind-hearted and altruistic Pokemon, but then others are saying that it's freaking dangerous and is harming everything. So I think it's interesting that this Pokemon is controversial. Cedra's sword entry reads, it's the males that raise the offspring. While Cedra are raising young, the spines on their backs secrete thicker and stronger poison. When I first read this, I was like, oh my God, they did the seahorse thing on the seahorse Pokemon. Turns out this isn't new information because it was mentioned once before, all the way back in its crystal dex entry. But I still wanted to bring it up because I feel like most of you were not aware of this. And also the fact that its poison gets more intense when it's raising its young is new information. So I, I can still cover it. Kingdra's sword entry reads, with the arrival of a storm at sea, this Pokemon will show itself on the surface. When a Kingdra and a Dragonite meet, a fierce battle ensues. I love this because it's giving me a really badass mental image of a Kingdra and a Dragonite dueling in the middle of an intense storm at sea. Like, that's awesome. Also, it could be referencing the fact that prior to Gen 3, these were the only two fully evolved dragon types. Or maybe it's a reference to Claire and Lance. Petalil's sword entry reads, Petalil appears around sources of clean water. Boiling leaves from this Pokemon's head results in a liquid that's sometimes used as a bug repellent. This is a lot. Okay, first off, boiling the leaves from its head, I certainly hope it doesn't hurt when you remove them. And also it becomes a bug repellent? but only by boiling the leaves? Maybe that explains why Petalil is still weak to bug? Then finally for the Isle of Armor is Galarian Slowking's sword entry, which says a combination of toxins and the shock of evolving has increased Shelter's intelligence to the point that Shelter now controls Slowking. So Galarian Slowking is a zombie. With original Slowking, the Shelter's toxins may just made the Slowking more intelligent. This time, the toxins combined with the spices made the Shelter more intelligent, so intelligent that it's now mind controlling the Slowking, which is kind of why it like kind of walks like wobbly like it does. That to me is, that just freaks me the hell out. So those are all the Isle of Armor deck entries I wanted to cover, but now we can move on to the crown, Tundra. First, we'll cover Jinx's dex entries, both of them. Jinx's sword entry reads, in certain parts of Galar, Jinx was once feared and worshiped as the queen of ice. Then its shield entry reads, the Jinx of Galar often have beautiful and delicate voices. Some of these Pokemon have even gathered a fan base. In our world, Jinx is a very unpopular Pokemon, but in Galar, the opposite is true, which is Really weird. Magmar's sword entry reads, Magmar dispatches its prey with fire, but it regrets this habit once it realizes that it has burned its intended prey to a charred crisp. I find this dex entry, despite being pretty intense and a little gruesome, also very funny. Magmar's just, Overdoing it a lot. I also wanted to mention its shield entry, which says these Pokemon's bodies are constantly burning. Magmar are feared as one of the causes behind fires. Oh really, people of the Galar region? This Pokemon that's constantly on fire is feared as a cause of fires? Who could have predicted? Cryogonal sword entry reads, with its icy chains, Cryogonal freezes those it encounters. It then takes its victims away to somewhere unknown. What is it with ice type Pokemon that float doing evil kidnapping freezing type stuff? Like Cryogonal does it, Frostlass does it. There's probably some other ones too. I also wanted to mention its shield entry. When the weather gets hot, these Pokemon turn into water vapor. Cryogonal are almost never seen during the summer. So this is not actually new information. I thought it was, but a lot of other previous dex entries mentioned that it turns into water vapor when it gets hot. But I still wanted to bring it up because holy crap, Cryogonal turns into water vapor when it gets warm? How does it, how does it stay alive? Swablu's shield entry reads, since Swablu looked like a cumulus cloud, 
foes can have a hard time finding it. Apparently its wings turned white over many generations. So Swablu's wings were not always white. And I'm just wondering, what color were they before? Were they gray, like storm clouds? Or were they just something random like purple? Neat Arena's sword entry reads, the horn on its head has atrophied. It's thought that this happens so Neat Arena's children won't get poked while their mother is feeding them. This is a reference to some of Neat Arena's previous dex entries where it talks about how it chews up its food and then spits them out for its offspring, like lots of animals do. So this is kind of cool because it explains why it doesn't have a horn. It's so that when it leans down to spit the food back out, its eager offspring won't run up and get poked by the horn that's like right there. Nido Queen's shield entry reads, it pacifies offspring by placing them in the gaps between the spines on its back. The spines will never secrete poison while young are present. I just think that's a really cool evolutionary feature that Nido Queen like stops secreting poison around its young and Nidorina doesn't have a horn because of its young. Yet, neither of these Pokemon can breed. Nidorino's sword entry reads, with a horn that's harder than diamond, this Pokemon goes around shattering boulders as it searches for a moonstone. So we've known its horn was harder than diamond, but this is the first we learn of Nidorino actively seeking out a moonstone so it can evolve. That means Nidorino inherently know that they evolve via moonstones and they are eager to do so. I just think that's really interesting and it's one of the very few mentions in the Pokemon world of Pokemon actively seeking out methods of evolving, at least with stones. Nido King's sword entry reads, when it goes on a rampage, it's impossible to control. But in the presence of a Nido Queen it's lived with for a long time, Nido King calms down. I just picture the Nido Queen going like, honey, you need a Snickers. Tyrant's shield entry reads, this Pokemon is selfish and likes to be pampered. It can also inflict grievous wounds on its trainer just by playing around. So today's lesson is don't have a tyrant. Not only can they inadvertently seriously harm you, they're also jerks. Salamence's sword entry reads, Salamence is an unusual Pokemon in that it was able to evolve a body with wings just by constantly wishing to be able to fly. So this is funny to me. It's not new information. A lot of previous Salamence entries talk about how it its fervent wish to fly caused its DNA to mutate. But the wording of this, it was able to evolve a body with wings just by constantly wishing to be able to fly. <laughs> just makes it sound like, I wish, I wish, I wish, ha ha. Gabite's sword entry reads, this Pokemon emits ultrasonic waves from a protrusion on either side of its head to probe pitch dark caves. So Gabite uses echolocation except instead of just barking, it's like just emitting waves from its head nubbins. Garchomp's sword entry reads, Garchomp makes its home in volcanic mountains. It flies through the sky as fast as a jet airplane, hunting down as much prey as it can. Then its shield entry reads, Garchomp is fast both underground and above. It can bring down prey and return to its den before its body has chilled from being outside. Did you catch the two relevant parts of those dex entries? It lives near volcanic mountains and its body can chill from being outside. This is the first dex entry acknowledgement of Garchomp really hating ice. Ammonite's sword entry reads, because some Ammonite managed to escape after being restored or are released into the wild by people, this species is becoming a problem. I was thinking about this when I was playing through the Crown Tundra and seeing wild fossil Pokemon, something that I cannot recall seeing ever at any point in Pokemon. So I was thinking, oh, maybe enough time has passed and they've revived enough of these from fossils that they've gone back into the wild and become functional wild species again. Apparently, I was right, and with Ammonite, I was so right that Ammonite has come back so much that now it's an invasive species. Next are Kabuto's dex entries, and I'm bringing them up because they kind of contradict each other. Its sword entry reads, this species is almost entirely extinct. Kabuto molt every three days, making their shells harder and harder. 
And then its shield entry reads, while some say this species has gone extinct, Kabuto sightings are apparently fairly common in some places. It sounds like the sword entry made a statement and the shield entry is like, actually, the evolution of Kabuto, Kabutops, also has a dex entry contradiction issue. But instead of it being sword and shield contradicting, it's one of the gen eight dex entries contradicting with an older gen. Kabutops' shield entry reads, the cause behind the extinction of this species is unknown. Kabutops were aggressive Pokemon that inhabited warm seas. This is in direct contradiction with its Ultra Sun Dex entry. Its body had begun to change so it could function on land, but it didn't adapt in time and went extinct. Ultra Sun says, oh, hey, we know the reason why it went extinct. And then Shield is like, no, no, we don't know. So like, do we know or do we not know? Aerodactyl's sword entry reads, this is a ferocious Pokemon from ancient times. Apparently even modern technology is incapable of producing a perfectly restored specimen. At first I was like, oh my gosh, this like any Aerodactyl we've seen is not perfectly restored. But then I realized, I think this is talking about its mega evolution. Mega Aerodactyl Sun Entry says part of its body has become stone. Some scholars claim that this is Aerodactyl's true appearance. Then it's Ultra Moon Dex Entry for Mega Aerodactyl says Mega Evolution awakened some dormant genes, bringing back the sharp rocks that once covered Aerodactyl's entire body. So a regular restoration of Aerodactyl just makes what we know as Aerodactyl. The extra step of mega evolution is required for us to see its true appearance. Golbat's sword entry reads, it loves to drink other creatures' blood. It's said that if it finds others of its kind going hungry, it sometimes shares the blood it's gathered. Aw, look at Golbat being so friendly and sharing the blood it violently sucked from other creatures. Just, just how nice. But Golbat ain't getting any blood from a Beldum. Beldum's shield entry reads, the cells in this Pokemon's body are composed of magnetic material. Instead of blood, magnetic forces flow through Beldum's body. I love these random anatomy tidbits that make no sense. It's got magnetic forces instead of blood. Forces aren't like visible. That's like, that's not a one-to-one -one replacement. One is a liquid. One is a force. Metagross's sword entry reads, because the magnetic powers of these Pokemon get stronger in freezing temperatures, Metagross living on snowy mountains are full of energy. So a lot of pseudo legendary Pokemon hate the cold, like Garchomp and Salamence and Dragonite, but Metagross, he digs it. Tortuga's shield entry reads, Tortuga is considered to be the ancestor of many turtle Pokemon. It was restored to life from a fossil. The amount of Pokemon theories and Darwinian evolution discussions that I've seen over the years talking about how Tirtuga is an ancestor of Lapras and Squirtle and other turtle Pokemon, I've seen a lot. And so I love that this Pokedex entry finally acknowledges and confirms that. Arkin's sword entry reads, this Pokemon was successfully restored from a fossil. As research suggested, Arkin is unable to fly but it's very good at jumping. I love that they say this. Somebody passed one, it's like, oh yeah, Arkin, yeah, he can't fly. Yeah, he sucks. But then this one is like, I mean, he can't fly, but he can jump really well. So, good for him. Archeops' sword entry reads, it needs a running start to take off. If Archeops wants to fly, it first needs to run nearly 25 miles per hour, building speed over a course of about two and a half miles. Most airplane runways are 6,000 feet, which is a bit over one mile. So Archeops needs like two and a half times an airplane runway to take off? My God. Cradilly's sword entry reads, it has short legs and can't walk very fast, but its neck and tentacles can extend to over three times their usual length to nab distant prey. Its neck and its tentacles. Do you realize how much of a reach that is? That is, my God, it could be on the other side of a building and catch you. Ooh. Agron's shield entry reads, long ago there was a king who wore a helmet meant to resemble the head of an Agron. 
He was trying to channel the Pokemon's strength. I just think this is a really cool piece of Pokemon universe history. And also that helmet sounds awesome. Dragonite's shield entry reads, this Pokemon is known as the Sea Incarnate. Figureheads that resemble Dragonite decorate the bows of many ships. So in the Pokemon world, instead of mermaids on the front of ships, you got Dragonites. Registeel's sword entry reads, Registeel's body is made of a strange material that is flexible enough to stretch and shrink, but also more durable than any metal. So not only did we learn that Cradilly can stretch its body to ridiculous lengths, so can Registeel, which I, what? I've never seen it do that, that's wild. Regieleki's shield entry reads, its entire body is made up of a single organ that generates electrical energy. Regieleki is capable of creating all of Galar's electricity. Chairman Rose tried to do all that crazy nonsense with the darkest day when he could have just taken a train to the south and got a Reggie Alecki. Reggie Drago's sword entry reads, an academic theory proposes that Reggie Drago's arms were once the head of an ancient dragon Pokemon. The theory remains unproven. If it's unproven, why is it in the Pokedex? I love how the Pokedex is just like, oh yeah, here's this really interesting fun fact about this Pokemon. That's not verified or real in any way. Come on, Pokedex, improve your journalistic integrity. The next few dex entries are all about the Galarian legendary birds, and they kind of inform us that maybe they're not the legendary birds. Galarian Articuno's shield entry reads, known as Articuno, this Pokemon fires beams that can immobilize opponents as if they had been frozen solid. Galarian Zapdos' sword entry reads, when its feathers rub together, they produce a crackling sound like the zapping of electricity. That's why this Pokemon is called Zapdos. Then Galarian Moltres' shield entry reads, the sinister aura that blazes like molten fire around this Pokemon is what inspired the name Moltres. Known as Articuno, is called Zapdos, inspired the name Moltres. These dex entries seem to imply that the legendary Galarian birds are not just variants of the original legendary birds, they're totally separate Pokemon that just bear a resemblance to the Kanto legendary birds. So the people of the region just, oh, hey, that looks kind of like Zapdos, that must be Zapdos, and the Pokedex classifies them as such. But the reality seems to be that they're totally different Pokemon. Spectrier's sword entry reads, it probes its surroundings with all its senses save one. It doesn't use its sense of sight. Spectrier's kicks are said to separate soul from body. I just wanted to mention this because I think it's kind of amusing. It makes me picture the scene from Doctor Strange where they like punch him in the stomach and like, oh, suddenly I'm astral projecting and I just picture Spectrier just going around doing that. Ice Rider Calyrex's sword entry reads, according to lore, this Pokemon showed no mercy to those who got in its way, yet it would heal its opponent's wounds after battle. What an interesting character Calyrex is. It brutally defeats anyone who gets in its way, but it's kind to them afterward. It's kind of honorable and kind of weird. Then finally, Shadow Rider Calyrex's shield entry says, legend says that by using its power to see all events from past to future, this Pokemon saved the creatures of a forest from a meteorite strike. Is it just Shadow Rider Calyrex that can see all events from past to future? Because regular Calyrex couldn't remember anything. But this one could see the future and stopped a meteorite strike. Like, what an upgrade just by hopping on a horse. Thank you so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.